All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's do this. Welcome back. It is Tuesday, and let's do some Wayne Dyer's Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, Living the Wisdom of the Dow. Tuesday Dow. And today we're going into the 14th verse. Wayne Dyer titles his essay here, Living Beyond Form. And that almost seems to be a theme throughout most of these when I'm trying to come up with titles for these videos based on what's talked about in each of these verses. And, you know, it always seems to come back to that formless, the inner place inside of us or noticing the, the non-form that's in the world that is necessary, the one where we talked about the the wheel, the spokes of the cartwheel depends upon the center or I uh, like the metaphor, this, it's the space between the bars that holds the tiger and so things like that. But it's always coming back to this intangible, which is one of the words in the first few lines here in the 14th verse. And we'll dive right into that right now. 14th verse of the Tao Te Ching. That which cannot be seen is called invisible. That which cannot be heard is called inaudible. That which cannot be held is called intangible. These three cannot be defined. Therefore, they are merged as one. Each of these three is suitable for description. By intuition, you can see it, hear it, and feel it. Then the unseen, unheard, and untouched are present as one. Its rising brings no dawn. <clears throat> Excuse me, brings no dawn. Its setting, no darkness. It goes on and on, unnameable, returning into nothingness. Approach it, and there is no beginning. Follow it, and there is no end. You cannot know it but you can be it at ease in your own life. Discovering how things have always been brings one into harmony with the way. That's a, a little bit longer than normal. That's a powerful, very powerful. Each and every one of these verses is fantastic. It, it takes me back to the line. Let's see if it's the first verse back here at the beginning. It's like the Tao that can be named is not the Tao, not the eternal Tao. Let's see right here. The Tao that can be told is not the eternal Tao. The Tao that can be named is not the eternal name. And it's, it's talking about that right here where it says each of these things is suitable, suitable for description. By intuition, you can see it here to feel it that then the unseen part of what you can see, paradoxical, or the unheard part of what you can hear, if that makes any sense, they're all present as one. So it's like the essence of things goes beyond the physicality of it. The rising brings no dawn, setting no darkness. So that's kind of a, to me, it makes you think about the sun. But this thing that rises brings no dawn and it's setting no darkness. It goes on and on, unnameable, returning into nothingness. It's that force that does all things while doing nothing, nothing at all. Or it does all things while leaving. It does nothing while leaving nothing undone. There we go. So let's get into Wayne Dyer's ideas here. Living beyond form. Try to imagine the idea of forever. That which has never changed. That which has no beginning or end. It cannot be seen, heard, or touched. But you know what it is and always has been. Think of that which even now, in this very moment, as you read these words, is the very understanding that's within you, the essence that permeates you and everything else. See, that's funny, we're right on the same track there. I was thinking the essence, 
the essence that permeates you and everything else, yet always eludes your grasp. There was this great talk one time, I think it was Alan Watts, and he was talking about this kind of thing, like trying to describe God, the nature of God, and he was talking about swimming. And how when you're swimming, in order to swim most effectively, you must first go with the water and not fight it. And the more you try to push down on it or get a stable, firm ground, the more you don't float, so to speak. And it's only in the letting go of trying to control it that you begin to be able to work with it. And he was metaphorically there talking about this force that is being described here, that always eludes our grasp, yet permeates everything. This primordial principle has ruled and still rules all beings. All that is or has ever been is the result of its unfolding. Lao Tzu insists, that you become aware of this amorphous precept by not relying upon your senses to experience this oneness. In the opening of this verse, you're urged to see without eyes and hear without ears. It's, it's taken me deep in my mind. I'm like, see without eyes. It's almost, it's almost like when you're seeing, when you're looking, Try to experience more than just, than just the visual nature of, like there's, there's more to be experienced when looking at a sunset than just a sunset. And everybody knows that. <clears throat> Hold without touching. These three ways of living beyond form need to be a part of our awareness. These shapeless realms merge into the one world of the spirit, the Tao, which creates and rules all life. We're being encouraged to live with a total awareness of this all-encompassing principle. Some scholars have singled out this 14th verse of the Tao Te Ching as the most significant of all its 81 offerings. That's fascinating. Because it stresses the significance of the single principle that's the underpinning of all existence. Now, would you call that what everybody describes as uh, God or, you know, universal? You know, it's interesting when you trying to describe that which cannot be described. <laughs> they're coming at it in a way without using names and just kind of talking about it like an all encompassing principle, which is a good, that's a good way to go about it. I agree. The principle that's underpinning all existence, tapping into this invisible, untouchable, immeasurable force will enable you to gain the harmony that comes with being connected to the oneness and harmony is your ultimate objective in deciding to live an inspirited life, inspired. It, it says in I N dash spirited life, but I think the analogy there is an inspired life filled with spirit. You want to learn to abandon your ego, which identifies with the world of things, possessions, and achievements, and re enter the placeless place. See, there it is again the placeless place. The formless form. It's amazing. It like it kind of takes your normal mind, throws it against the wall, and it's like, wait, what? The placeless place? <laughs> From which you and all others originated. By doing so, you reg regain the mystical, almost magical powers of your eternal, eternal source of being. Here you live beyond the world of form. And I'll add a quick note there. That's becoming a sorcerer. When you begin to work from your source of being, using our mystical, what some would call magical powers, 
and we can live beyond the world of form while still being in it, becoming magicians. Or anyways, let's continue. When you live exclusively in form, you concentrate on accumulating information. Mm, interesting, interesting wordplay there. This 14th verse of the Tao calls you to immerse yourself in inspiration rather than information. Mm. Immerse yourself in inspiration rather than information. To become at one with that which has always been. So this in-form-ation, being in form rather than formless, instead of being in spirit or inspired. And then the correlation there to immersing ourselves in inspiration or being in spirit rather than information or being in form. Powerful. To become at one with that which has always been. Mm. And this, as this verse of the Tao concludes so insightfully, discovering how things have always been brings one into harmony with the way. This is a really deep one. This is talking about like understanding the true nature of reality. And then discovering how, discovering that, how things have always been, true nature of reality, understanding the elements and electrics and magnetics and how the universe actually works. And see, that even might be in formation rather than inspiration. The way has no conflict in it. How could it? There is only the oneness. That is a blend of invisible, I lost a blend of invisible, inaudible, and intangible. Mm, that's another good way to describe uh, what some would call God or creator or great spirit. It's a blend of the invisible, inaudible, and intangible, as well as all the opposites of those things at once. Imagine a word where conflict, a world where conflict is impossible. That'd be, that's quite an imagination there. Where Lao Tzu says that there is no darkness or light. The nameless source that has always been gives only the peace and harmony you desire. So recognize this infinite oneness and keep it in your awareness. You'll know that the way is simple. The way when you stop questioning why things have been as they have, free of the fears that attend soul identification with this world of form, you can embrace your infinite nature. That is, you can love your foreverness rather than dread that life ends with the death of your body. That lesson, that single teaching there, I think could change the world more than anything else, especially now, but in any time in history, that free being free of the fears that attend soul identification with this world of form and physicality and the bodies we inherit, kind of adding my, adding my own thoughts here to this, you can embrace your infinite nature. And then that is, we can love our foreverness I'll add, in the knowledge that, rather than the dread that life ends with the death of our body, you, your body, and all the life are the result of the unwinding of this eternity. It didn't get to it. The point that I was going towards there is if we can get past the fears that come from believing that all we are is this physical existence, in Coming to know that death is a promotion, Jeff put it hilariously earlier, death is a promotion, and if we can be free of that, the bondage of the fear 
of the promotion to the reason you know the promotion is in there is it's you you're going to a higher level of yourself and you're no longer limited like we are here this is why it's talking about connecting with our our almost magical powers of our eternal source of being here once we can get to that part of ourselves that is the you know the higher self or our spirit or whatever you want to call it the non-physical side of us then we can do things in the world we can live more fully we can live more fully by not being trapped by our fear of limited existence my mind is playing devil's advocate at the moment which i like to do a lot whenever i'm saying something i'll think the opposite thing kind of you know challenge it it's like okay but isn't the fear of death a driver in life and doesn't it give us some oomph like the people that say live every day like it's your last uh you know philosophically or metaphorically saying don't be lazy and don't waste your time and you know do the things that you want to do Tell the people the things that you want to tell them now. And so it's interesting comparing both of those philosophies, philosophies side by side. Let's continue here. You, your body, and all of life are the result of the unwinding of this eternity. Here's what Lao Tzu is relating in this 14th verse of the Tao Te Ching from his 2,500-year-old perspective. Man, this guy was on it back then. Use the technique of walking meditation to obtain knowledge of the absolute. Mm. I'm glad he mentions that here. Walking meditation is different than sitting meditation. Zazen. Or it's different kinds of Zen and meditation practices that are contemplative or make you contemplate. Yeah, the funny one I heard one time is one guy was like, yeah, I meditate while I'm mowing the grass or doing the dishes. And I was like, wow, that's a good way to think of it. So use the technique of walking meditation to obtain knowledge of the absolute. Stay in a persistent state of awareness of the eternal principle that animates all of life. That's a packed statement there. By seeing the unfolding of God in everyone you encounter, Mm, that's a key teaching there too. Make sure you see the unfolding of God or creation, great spirit, great mystery, the Tao, whatever you want to call it. See the unfolding of that in everything. And then the things that seem bad and seem terrible, or maybe the things that are bad and are terrible that we like to label them as because you know, we're in this world of duality down here, playing the game. Even though we know it's beyond duality, we still got to, you know. But, but by seeing the unfolding of God in everything, the unfolding of the mystery of creation, you start to see these things that we deem negative as you, know, you take it lighter. You're not so hurt by the world because you're like well this is the unfolding of the great mystery that always has purpose like if you look at all the worst things that have ever happened good things or great learnings lessons whether we forget them or not have come out of the hardest things diamonds are made in the rough all right and all of your identification with your ego-based world, you'll come to be more like the Tao and less like that which has tarnished your link to it. This is the alignment that will bring you back into balance and restore the harmony that is your true egoless nature. Hmm. Powerful. I try to refrain from the reason I keep saying uh, a thousand or, you know, it's the six different 
most well-known descriptions of God is because some people are uh, really turned off by the term God because, you know, it's gotten a bad rap. Once you start to research stuff, you're like, you start to learn that the externalization and personification, I forget what it's called when you turn something into a person, but, it, you know, it's, it's taken us away from our connection to what really is. And so that's why I kind of make those distinctions. Improve your vision by looking beyond what your eyes see. What a great suggestion. Whatever you gaze upon, ask yourself, what is the true essence of what my eyes reveal to me? I was listening to a great interview. I think it was Tamarack Song on Matt Belair's show. And he was talking about receiving messages from animals. Might have been a different guy. There was two interviews back to back and they were talking about spirit animals and nature and living in nature and stuff and getting messages from animals. And if we're out in our walk, so yeah, say we're doing a walk, taking this walking meditation and we're, we're being in a persistent state of awareness of this unfolding of God and everything and the eternal principle that's animating everything. And we're like taking it in and then we'll flip forward to what it's saying here. When we gaze and we see a bird, ask our, instead of just being like, oh, there's a bird or not even noticing it, ask ourselves, what is the true essence of what my eyes reveal to me? Or what is the message or the teaching? And then, um, the, the guy who's talking about spirit animals, you know, each, each one of these creatures has symbologies and different meanings that can have lessons for us in our lives. And if something keeps showing up, like, you know, the weird time when a hummingbird flies in front of your face and says, hello, you're like, whoa, those kind of things we need to begin to notice. All right, let me get back into this now. Wonder about the magical something that awakens a tree in the springtime and places blossoms where frozen limbs existed only a few weeks before. Trees aren't stupid. They don't just like start getting messed up because the cold weather's coming in. They literally know what they're doing so their limbs don't break off when the snow falls, putting too much weight on the leaves that would be there had they not known. You could argue and say, it's nature doing it, not the tree. But then I think the counter argument to that would be they're working together. So I have to say, it's like, does the, does the wind move the boat or does the sail? <laughs> These are great questions. Inquire, what is the energy behind the creation of a mosquito or behind our every thought. For that matter, do the same thing with everything you hear as well. Those sounds emerge from and return to a silent world. It's the space between the notes that makes the music. There's a quote that I'll add in there, which I think came from a previous chapter. Improve these sounds, no, nope, sorry, improve your hearing by listening for the quiet sounds and trying to notice. It's kind of probably hard in a busy city or, you know, a hectic area, but to try to notice that where the sounds emerge from and return to this silent place that exists amidst all the chaos. It's always there. We just have to be able to look for it. Awe, all right, we're continuing now with Wayne Dyer's writings. Awe and gratitude will grow when you embrace this forever principle. And that's what I was just thinking. I'm like, man, if we're able to do that last paragraph there, it'll be like zen doubt, bliss doubt. It'll be like the most entertaining movie or entertainment experience possible just walking through the park and trying to, you know, do those challenges, looking beyond what our 
eyes see and what we hear. It's fascinating. But even greater than this, we'll awaken to a new possibility that includes our own divine magnificence. And that's the key to meditation there, is coming to know yourself. Like I said in one of my last videos, the greatest thing we could do is ask ourselves, who am I? And where, you know, where is all of me coming from, whether it's my thoughts or my, and what do I want? And becoming on purpose, creating our own direction and knowing that we are divine and sovereign and free. Boom. <sighs> Wonderful. Your mind will free itself from a false identification with the transitory world, and you'll see the eternal in all things. Yes, Lao Tzu tells you, you'll transform your life by being in spirit. It is here that you will recognize what Rumi, mm, Jalaluddin Rumi, great Sufi poet, poetically offered some 1,500 years ago after Lao Tzu's powerful words. Every tree and plant in the meadow seemed to be dancing. Those which average eyes would see as fixed and still. Mmm, so good. If you got value out of that, smash the like button, consider subscribing or hit the description below and get yourself a copy of this because you're gonna want this in your library, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm telling you, physical, Hard copies of things have to be physically destroyed for them to be destroyed. Digital copies of things don't have to be physically destroyed for them to be destroyed. So it's good to have physical backups for these kind of things. So that, you know, if one day worse comes to worse, we've at least got a library we can fall back on and read while there's no power. <laughs> Makes me think of the... Uh, Walls of the Twilight Zone, where the guy he survives, he's a crazy reader and he's a, he works at the bank and he's always reading while he's supposed to be working and the boss is getting on him. And so he goes and hides in the safe and the safe gets closed and he doesn't realize he's locked in there or something like that. Anyways, I might be adding on, but nuclear holocaust happens or something like that. The whole world blows up. And he comes out of the safe somehow. It must have not been locked, but he comes out of the safe. And he's like, what happened? And so he's walking around and long story short, he finds a library and he's like, yes, I can read for all eternity and nobody can bother me. And then he breaks his glasses. <laughs> Such a good one. It's a lot better than well, what the family guy made a quick joke out of, too. It's a really good Twilight Zone episode. All right. Let's get back to it, ladies and gentlemen. We'll read Rumi's beautiful poem here again. Every tree and plant in the meadow seem to be dancing. Those which average eyes would see as fixed and still. I urge you to see the dance of how things have always been, Wayne Dyer says, in the unseen, unheard, and untouched present. And finally, what we'd love to get here at the end of every chapter of Change Your Thoughts, Change Your Life, Living the Wisdom of the Tao is a suggestion by Dr. Dyer to us to do the Tao now and how we can practically apply this into our lives, where the rubber meets the road, so to speak. Take note of as much invisibleness as you can when gazing at a tree, a distant star, a mountain, a cloud, or anything else. <laughs> in the natural world, anything else in the natural world, embrace the principle that allows it to be and then turn it inward and do the same for your own physical existence. So I'll cut in here, like seeing every plant in the, in the meadow, every tree and plant, seeing them dancing instead of stagnant and still, having the eyes to see the beauty and the majesty of nature and being awestruck by it. 
you know, right as I said those words, I think I realized that there's a part in the, I don't know if it was the Kabbalion or the Hermetica or something like that, to where it was talking about the purpose of life, the meaning of life. And that right there was part of it. It was to be able to recognize creation as being God or, you know, whatever, being creation itself, the great mystery, and then honoring it, being in awe of it, and being a steward of it. And that was like the simplified meaning of life from, I think it was translations of the Emerald Tablets or something like that. I know it was in the Her Hermetica or the Kabbalion, one of the two. All right, sorry, I got off topic there. Let's do the Tao now. Take note of as much invisibleness as we can when gazing at a tree, a distant star, a mountain, a cloud, anything else in the natural world. Embrace the principle that allows it to be and then turn it inward and do the same for our own selves, our own physical existence. See the beauty and majesty in our life as we can see it in a tree or a blade of grass. Sorry, I keep adding words here. It is the principle that expands your lungs beats your heart, and grows your fingernails or your hair if you haven't lost it yet. I'm lucky in that area. Live in this principle for 10 minutes today and take note of how you feel connected to your source of being. Boom. Super powerful every time. I know one day I'm going to look back on this library of videos if it still exists, and I'm going to be like, yes, I am so ready to go back through with my child, grandchild, you know, or a niece, nephew, who knows, and just to take this in and try to connect and bring it to our lives. And so that way we can have a higher quality of life. You know, it's like the video I did, I think posted yesterday, it's like that the difference between IQ and EQ, I know you could be the smartest person ever, but it's not going to do a bit of help for you if you have no emotional intelligence, if you have no control over the way you feel and the way the thoughts in your mind are just popping in. And if we haven't done any work to control that, our own emotionality, it's great stuff. That's a really deep one. You could almost rant on the stuff in there for a long time. The quiet sounds. That bit there about looking beyond what you see, like going out for a walk, doing the walking meditation, and noticing the, the, the Tao, or the source, or the energy, Maybe the energy is a good way to put it. The universal energy that is running all things. It's flying the bugs. It's growing the trees. It's blowing the wind. It's doing us, even though we think we're doing ourselves. It's just amazing. And that, that's something that can really take us out of our, you know, our daily mundane. Ah, I got to do this. Got to do that. And it can take us into a place to where there's peace a lot more easily accessed i think that's the whole purpose i do this is you know if somebody's struggling or if i'm struggling in the future or i can revert to this whether it's the book or my own thoughts and philosophies because that's one of the other things you can read words but what expands in your mind what comes from those words is something unique to every individual and i think it's to be honored and cherished and i think more people need to you know be able to expand upon ideas that have already been expanded upon we need to keep adding on layers and layers layers and layers of thought and one day we'll have so many thoughts that we just won't know what to do with all of them <laughs> <laughs> no but it's good you get you get a different perspective when i love listening to people 
you know, reading, uh, I love listening to Rex when he reads the ancient texts, whether it's the, I won't go into naming any of them, but because the names are wild and tough to remember, really. But, yeah, you know, you, you get you get this part where somebody will be reading like I've been doing here, and then you break off and you start rambling on your own. Some people may hate that, but I purposefully love that. And that's one of the reasons I love listening. One of the reasons I love listening to people is just the rants that begin to happen because your mind pops onto a subject and then a resonation happens and you're like, yeah, I have this thought about it. And then you're able to attempt to get the thought out. And it's just fantastic. I think that's how we really stumble onto great wisdom. It makes me wonder how, you know, these ancient individuals 25 centuries ago, like Lao Tzu, would come up with this understanding of the way, the great way, the Tao. It's fantastic. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you got value, you should subscribe. Smash the like button. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought. And if you're interested in owning a landscape painting, check the description below. I also do that and try to sell them to try to help out with a little bit of income. Everybody knows how it is. And to have a high quality piece of artwork that's an original work, not a print, for shoot, 60 bucks, you know, 65 bucks or so compared to $2,000. Maybe one day I'll be up there. But, you know, great artists aren't great artists till after they're gone, right? So <laughs> hopefully we're there before then, ladies and gentlemen. But once again, thank you so much for everybody who watches. Be sure to support the author. And even though he's no longer with us, support his family by supporting his legacy and what he left with us by getting yourself a copy of this book, which is also in the descriptions, but you can get it wherever you want. I actually found this one. Funny enough, we were walking through uh, an antique, one of those antique places. It's kind of a building just full of old stuff, old people's stuff that they're trying to sell. And this book was sitting there on the shelf. And I was like, is that Wayne Dyer? I was like, yes. I've listened, listened to a lot. I think it was Matt Belair that actually introduced me to Wayne Dyer. So shout out to Matt Belair. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I love you. We'll be back next Tuesday for more Tuesday Dow. Change your thoughts, change your life, living the wisdom of the Dow. And hopefully we'll get some wisdom of the ages in this week. And Get back to Matt Belair's Zen Athletes in Life. We got chapter one of that coming up. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen, and let me know if you want me to talk about anything else. I can rant on many subjects. All right. Love you.